Hi, it's Emma here. I don't usually make videos, but I thought I'd jump in and do a hashtag. Um, I know I'm in chat on lives with folks a lot of the time and commenting on your channels. And I just wanted to say hi. I, I promise I'll show my face sometime, but today is not the day. So I'm going to respond to the hashtag only 10 decks for Lent. Even though I don't observe Lent, I like the idea of doing the only 10 decks and having it be for a fixed amount of time. So the first thing I knew I wanted to include is a sta you know pretty standard RWS reader. Um, for that, I chose the Luminal 11 Luna Soul, which I have trimmed and edged, um, taking the titles off. It's just something that's like right out of the box, RWS, re-illustrated to be you know, a very soft color palette and it's more inclusive than the standard RWS. And sometimes I do neglect this deck a little and that was a lot of the focus of the only 10 decks was to pick out things that I haven't really been working with and give them a chance. Um, not exactly paired with that, but along the same lines, I have the Seed and Sickle Oracle, which I have not worked with very much lately. So um, I'm categorizing that as a neglected deck and I'll be working with that. And what I'm planning to do is the Tarot and Oracle are not strictly paired. I, I plan to mix up the pairings and the ways that I use them. Um, I think a lot of you know, the, this particular deck has beautiful illustrations and the name of the plant, but what it doesn't have on the cards is keywords. So it's a little bit reliant on the guide work, guidebook, although I, I am able to get a little bit of intuitive information from it. And I've, I've been enjoying getting to know it a little and um, so I can determine if I'm gonna keep it or not. So the next thing in my only 10 pile is the Spirit Keepers Revelation by Ben and Belle Wen. I think most people know this deck. I opened this, I got it in November whenever it shipped. I've been doing a one card a day random pull that I then um, read the, you know, do my own review of what I see in the card. Then I read the little white book and then I'm also working through the book of maps. So this is a one card a day. This will wrap up by the end of this month, at which point you'll start using it for more readings, but I didn't want to put that aside. So that's in the only 10 decks. Then for another Oracle, which I love, and I don't reach for it that much, is the Threadbound Oracle from Numinous. Um, again, I love, it's beautifully colored. It, this one does have keywords on it so you can use it without the book kind of as you know accent or you know excavation of readings with tarot or you can use it on its own in little spreads and I haven't spent enough time with it and that's in my only 10 pile. Next on the list this was one of the very first kickstarters I backed the fifth spirit tarot and I think as I got a few, a little bit of deck overwhelm going on toward the end of last year. I have not used it as much lately as I did when I first got it. And I want to go back and spend some time with it. Um, I really, I mean, I love this deck, but I really love that the miners are kind of this semi-illustrated pips. I, I just, it was a good bridge deck for me to go a little more intuitive and also nice to have more of the cards and not have people on them. That was a surprise for me that I actually respond to that. Um, I just love this deck and I'm spending more time with it than I have. Then next in the pile, I have a couple of newer decks that I have not spent very much time with yet. Um, the first of these is the Blood Moon. I did get this at least four months ago, maybe five. It's gorgeous. I was a little int intimidated by it when I first got it in terms of the renaming of all the suits, um, you know, trying to get to know the imagery on the cards. I'm a little more relaxed now in the way I'm reading and I just want to spend some time with it and use it for more readings. 
So there's that one. Next in the newer to me pile is this abstract futures tarot, which was actually created by an art gallery. Um, it's a, a duo of, of women that do this. It's from the Hilma's Ghost Gallery. It is a completely abstract deck based on Rider Waite Smith, but without really any traditional imagery at all. And this was collaboratively, all the cards were collaboratively drawn together by the two artists. Um, they've actually been running a wonderful series of informative talks and tarot lessons and magic lessons via their art gallery. Um, they're free and they mail the recordings available. So I'll see if I can figure out how to link to their Instagram where you can access the archive. It's really been wonderful. Um, Sarah Potter is the reader slash witch that works with them a lot um, to teach the deck. And this deck is really surprising me. And I had it on my wish list for a really long time and I was really afraid that it was over my head. Um, and it's definitely a learning experience to go with something so abstract and try to, there's really no choice but intuition. Um, although at this point, you know, once you know the Rider weight system enough, I think you can bring enough background information with you into the reading. Um, next is the last oracle in my pile, and this is the Poesis or Poesis, we can't really decide, oracle. Um, this is just a very straightforward one keyword per card. There's no guidebook really. I think you can access online. There's like a series of little poems that go with each card, but um, I don't really feel they're needed. I find this a very pointy and direct oracle. Um, the mess, the images, some of them get a little surreal. The keywords are sometimes very kind and sometimes a little more pointy. And I just find that it goes pretty nicely with a wide variety of decks. It's just this kind of monochromatic palette. Um, you know, it can smack you down a little, <laughs> but in a loving way, in a loving way. I'd say it's a little tough love deck. Um, next to last is the Susser Beto Tiny Traveler edition of their tarot. Um, I had the Sasa Burrito on my wish list for a long time and I kept going back and forth. So when the smaller edition came out, um, I took that moment. I said, now is the time, now is the time. And I really love it. I think that as a mini deck, you don't really lose any detail in the art because the, the style is not, it's, not relying on like finely detailed amount of information. Um, and this is another one that surprises me a little. Um, I'm finding that the characters, the way they're drawn and their expressions and their positions are very emotionally emotive. And uh, I'm really enjoying reading with this deck very much. And then last on the list, I don't know where I put it. I had a different deck in the number 10 spot. It was a more shadowy deck, um, but I got some stuff going on in my personal life and the world is uh, pretty darn shadowy these days. So I decided to pick something a lot more neutral and that is the Herb Crafters Tarot. Um, I, this is another kind of neglected deck. I do really like it. Um, when I first got it, again, it was one where I really felt like I had to go to the book to look for explanations because I wasn't as strong with my, you know, retained information of the standard meanings of the cards. But now I feel like I can bring those meanings with me and I can also allow myself to see things in the arrangement on each of the illustrations. Um, and that, it, you know, not relying so much on what the book says about raspberries, but I can see things about, um, you know, for example, if you're thinking of right away with this, there's that pathway, right? That would be the two and the three baskets. I don't know. I, there's, there's information there, and I find it's a nice, neutral, pleasing, beautiful 
earth-based calming deck right now to add to my readings. And that's it. That's, that's my 10. And honestly, saying that I'm going to work with all of these across the span of six weeks, I think that might almost be too many. I don't think I'll be able to go as deep on the newer decks as I can in that time. But I do like the idea of maybe going into six week or rotations where I pull out maybe eight decks and put them in a basket. And what this is helping me with is I don't have any decisions to make. I don't go stare at the shelf and wonder which deck I'm going to pull. I, I have an assortment and um, sometimes I work better with a smaller set of choices. It's helping me get over some of the deck overwhelm. And my collection isn't that big. Don't even get me wrong. It's under 100. But as someone who started 2020 with four decks, um, saying that not, I now only have 70, <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of new information. So anyway, um, thanks. I think this was Silva that originated this hashtag, if I'm correct. And I've watched many people's videos. If I can figure it out, sorry, I'm a, I'm a newbie. I really apologize. I will link your channels below. Thank you.